Well, with the holidays fast approaching, I thought the Doll family might like to have a turkey to serve for dinner. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this is to make. All right, and no, this is not an empty tray. This is the clay we're gonna start with. This is translucent, and this is probably way more translucent than I need. And this is any brown clay. What we're doing, we're adding the two together. We just want to put a slight tint to our translucent clay, so it's not, so it looks like it's been in the oven. So, because this, what I'm making here are the, the bones that are gonna stick out of the end of the uh, turkey drumsticks. So we need to just, just make this clay look like it's just barely, barely got some color to it. And now we're going to, and this, since it's translucent, it's very, very soft clay. And for this one, we want about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to actually measure this so I don't get it. Yeah, that's way too big. And by the way, this, I picked this up at Home Depot years ago. It's over where they have the uh, power tools with the drills and the drill and the drill bits. It's for measuring drill bits. It's great for measuring very, especially the really tiny clay that we sometimes want. And that's close enough to a sixteenth of an inch. I'm not going to get super, super picky. And now I'm going to cut... And if you don't have anything to measure with, just think about the same size as a um, as a toothpick, a standard toothpick. They're usually about, or I think some people call them a cocktail stick. Now we are going to hold this and support it, and we're going to take a pointy tool. I'm using my dental pick, and I'm just going to make a little dent. And now I'm going to transfer it to a paper plate. Try and keep, oh, forgot one important step. We want to make this end, the end that we did not make, um, that's way too long, that we did not make, we didn't put that little divot in. That's, I made those way too long. Okay, that's better. Sorry about that. I'm, for some reason, I'm feeling very disorganized this morning. I don't know why. No single line and I know you probably can't see much here and even if I took a picture because this is so small it's not really going to show what is those little touches all right now I'm going to move these to my paper plate and I'm going to bake those at about 250 for um, probably about five minutes and when those are baked and they'll only take a minute to cool off we can start working on the clay that will be the turkey meat. All right, those are cooling off off to the side, and now I've got a ball of white clay. You can use any white clay, and in fact, I'm actually using Sculpey Original because I had it on my table, and we're not getting detail out of this. We are, we just want a chunk of white clay. And then here I have a teaspoon of white sand. Try to get sand that doesn't have too many sparklies in it. This one's not bad. Um, and then we're going to work as much of that sand into this clay as physically possible, as much as it will take. We want to change the texture of this clay dramatically from the nice soft clay to, well, you'll see when I get done, that it's going to be very a very different texture. You could probably skip this step, but I like, if you're going to show any uh, turkey sliced, um, because we're going to have leftover turkey, and I'm going to make a basically a cane of tur sli turkey to slice so you can plate up turkey. If you're going to do that especially, you're going to want to do this. And it doesn't take too horribly long, um, but I'm not going to make you sit here through this. I am going to turn the camera off. I'm going to work in as much as we'll work in. And when I get that worked in, I will be back and I'll show you how it looks and I'll show you the difference in the texture. So I'll be back in a sec. 
All right, I've got all the all the uh, sand worked in, and now you can see the texture we've got. It's a very different texture than pol than regular polymer clay by itself. It would never break like that if it was just the polymer clay. So now what we need to do is we need to divide it a little bit. So to do that and get it even, I am going to roll it into a snake that is as consistent in diameter as I can get it. And I'm going to make it to any length that is easy to divide by three. I don't want to have to do a lot of math here. I just want to be able to cut off one third of this clay and set it aside for later. This is going to be our main part of our turkey. And to make our turkey, we're going to roll a ball. That's our first start. I'm going to do my best, by the way, to stay under the camera. It's it's hard. I've got my, for some reason, I can't get my camera set up where I usually do. Let's see. And we're going to kind of push it down. We want kind of a flattish area on one end, and we want it to come more to a point here. And then we're going to use some tools. Let me see what I've got. I just grabbed a variety of clay tools. We're going to pick it up. This narrow end, we're going to pull some of the clay out of it. We're actually going to cut off a little bit because we don't need quite this much. Pull that off. We're going to make our little tail. Little and then we're going to, let's see, what am I going to use? Ideally, if I had a, some kind of a scoop, that would be awesome, but I don't have a small scoop. We're going to kind of pull out. We want to make this as somewhat hollow. Now, I am not, at this point anyway, depending on how my turkey looks when I get to that point, I'm not going to put stuffing in my turkey. You can if you want. Um, I'll, tr I, I'll check the channel and see if I have a, um, a tutorial on how to make stuffing. Uh, if I don't, then I'll make that in a few weeks. Maybe next week. We'll see. If I've got it, then I'll link it down at the bottom of the video. Let's see what I've got here for tools. Use a toothpick. There we go. So that's, so far, we're doing really good here. Now we're going to have this little bit. We don't have near as much as I normally do, so I might make a little extra to make our sliced turkey. So now we've got this piece. This is that little third, piece, third of the clay that we had. I'm going to get it just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, because again, I need to divide this into thirds again. And let's see. Make you to a, a nice even. That's pretty good. Try cutting with the right side of my blade. Now, I'm going to start with a ball. And depending on how you fix your turkey at home, you can vary how you um, present him. And let me know if you would like a raw turkey. I can attempt to do a raw one too if you'd like, if you guys want to see that. We're going to make a kind of a teardrop shape. And I find I have better luck making the end narrower if I do my right hand. Um, but we will need to turn one of these around. And we want to make it kind of flat. Now we're going to turn one of these over. So we have a leg going each way. And I'm actually going to go this way. Now I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to make a kind of a mark here. This is where our drumstick 
has folded over from the thigh. Now, whoops, I don't want to forget our leg bones that we made. You know, little drumstick bones. So we are going to And if it tears like that one did, I'll, I'll fix that in a second. I'm going to get the other one in before I manage to lose it. Because if these roll away, they're really hard to find. Now, I'm going to take a tool and kind of... Now, the fold part goes down, and we want to put this right about here. Let's, let's point you up a little more. Try and get your legs on evenly so they are coming off the turkey straight across from each other. And now, this other little piece we have. I'm going to cut a little bit off of this because I think I've got a little too much to make two wings. Add that to that. That's better. Now we want about an eighth of an inch um, snake. I can never find the eighth. Now we can go down just a little bit more. Now I'm going to point the ends. And fold this in half so that I can cut it in half. Now when I make a turkey, I fold the wings underneath the body. So that's how I'm going to do my miniature one. If you, you do yours differently, then do yours the way you do it. If you have your wings sticking up, do that. is that leftover piece of clay that we had. And I'm going to make a little, just a little kind of a lump here, a little cane with a flat side on it. And I'm going to put all of these in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes. I want to solidify them before I go too much, probably about five minutes actually. I want five minutes now and then we'll come back and texture because I don't want to lose my shape. So I'll be right back. All right, if at any point when you're working on a clay project and you feel like it's getting too soft, stick it in the freezer for five or 10 minutes. That way we won't lose our shape entirely when we're going on to the next step. And now I'm using just a piece of crumpled aluminum foil. I'm starting with this guy simply because it's, it's closer. If I would have left this not and not stuck in the freezer, that would have smashed down really easily. I'm going to do the same thing on my turkey, but this way I won't lose all that definition I already have. Some things you can pre you can bake in between steps. We can't this. Now be sure and support your parts that you've put on. And you don't need a lot of texture. You just want a little bit. And then after you get that, this is one of those scrubby pads that you buy to do your dishes with. I love this for texturing clay. 
All right. And now I think we're going to be able to go ahead and get our color on without having to refrigerate the, or freeze them again. Sometimes I find I want to freeze them before I do that. This time it feels like it's doing okay. So I have some yellow ochre uh, chalk here. I'll try and take a picture, try and remember to take a picture of the different colors of chalk I'm using. Oh, I should probably take a picture of our turkey before I start adding color. I'm gonna, you'll hear my camera here in a second. Please ignore that. There, I just wanna get a, I wanna get a picture so that I can have it on the uh, blog post. Now, I've got some yellow ochre chalk there. Checking to make sure I don't have any other chalk in my brush. And this is just an eyeshadow brush. And we're gonna do this just like we do when we make bread. Gonna use this to make him look nice and goldeny brown. Yeah, if you guys wanna see um, a raw turkey, let me know. I'll try and work that one up. That's a little more complicated actually. And you don't need to get color everywhere, like in the little crevices, because usually your turkey doesn't color evenly. I'm going to find my toothpick. I want to get that looking so it looks more like it's tucked under. Same here. I'm going to tuck that under the, the leg. Up until when you bake, you can keep tweaking your, your turkey. You can keep working on shaping and making sure it's just the way you want it. Now, a word of caution. If you have a miniature roasting pan or a cutting board or a serving platter or something that you have your heart set on displaying your turkey on, have that available when you are making your turkey because it's really easy, just like in real life, to end up with a turkey that's too big to fit. All right, that's fairly golden, so now I'm gonna take a kind of a reddish color. Go from light to dark. really wish this piece would stay right side up because I don't really want to get a lot of clay of uh, chalk on the bottom side of him. brown. And these are pretty much the same colors I use when I'm coloring bread. If you've been watching my channel for a while and you've seen me do breads and stuff, these are the same colors. I'm going to pull this off of here because we're going to slice him. Now if you want to display your turkey whole, you will leave him the way he is right now. I'm going to put a little more of the dark brown on those spots that would you know, the, the parts that stick out. And you can go with a darker brown if you want to get a much darker like he's burnt. All right, pull him off of there for a moment so I can clean that tray off. Now, we could take a knife and slice into our turkey right here and make it look like we've served the breast meat. I'm not going to for my display, but that is an option. Um, I really don't want to do that on this one. Now we've got this piece. This I'm going to slice up so I have it on hand in case I want to do any um, plated turkey for another scene. I'm just slice nice thin slices. Okay. 
I guess I can go ahead and slice off the, I'll slice a couple of slices here. You, what you can do is you can take this and kind of slice, I wasn't going to, but I will, just so you guys can see what it looks like. You just slice off a slice. And now he's already sliced. You could do more or less, depending on what you want to do. So I am now going to bake all. I'm going to lay these out individually. If you want to, you could probably put them together. But I'm going to lay them out individually so I've got more options later. I'm going to put them on a paper, clean paper plate. And I'm going to bake these at 2, 275 for, um, I'm thinking about 20 minutes because this turkey is pretty thick. He's pretty dense here in the in the end. So 20 minutes and then I'm going to let it cool and then I'll be back and we'll go to the next step. All right, they are baked and cooled and now I have all these slices that I can use to create scenes with. And now we're going to finish off our turkey here. You know what? All right. Now, I'm going to zoom you guys in and do my best to keep under the camera. It's kind of difficult. All right, so I have some satin Mod Podge. This was provided by the wonderful people at Plaid, as was the brush I'm going to use. And I'm going to pour just a tiny bit out. I don't think I'll need more than that. brush and I am going to very carefully I'm going to stay off of this white area but I want to put a little bit of a shine and a finish onto the skin of this turkey because he would be he would have some shine to him coming out of the oven don't get too much on I'm attempting to keep this under the camera and not my head under the camera. And where is that one that was, there's the end slice. I am going to, this is the slice that came off of the breast of the turkey. There. So I'm going to let that dry. When that is all dry, I will come back and we will see how this turkey looks. I think he's going to look yummy. Well, I have to say, I don't think I could be any happier with this turkey than I am right now. He turned out absolutely the way I wanted him to. He looks great. I love the texture in the little cutaway part. I love these little slices. I can put those onto a plate later and plate up some meals if I want to or whatever. They can be used in a lot of different mini scenes. If you enjoyed today's video, please push the like button and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your ideas and let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future. If you haven't subscribed and you enjoy my content, push that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. Be sure and check the blog post. I'll have some links and some photos in there. And if you haven't found us on Facebook, that's usually the best place to get a hold of me. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.